Today, I'll show you how to build a wand that can do this. Akio bubbly. Akio beer. Akio soda. <laughs> Woo! In celebration of you. <laughs> Only wand in the world that can take the top off a bottle of bubbly and open a beer, and you can make it for about $5. Interested? Here we go. You can build this entire wand with a couple metal files and a hacksaw. Now, if you have some power tools, a grinder, even a Dremel tool will be helpful, but not necessary. I started out with a 12 inch nail. It's about 80 cents at Home Depot, Lowe's, or any hardware store. This is a four inch long piece of half inch PEX pipe. Two number eight nuts and bolts. This happens to have a Phillips head on it. They're one inch long. You could use three quarter inch. But ultimately, you're gonna have to cut them down. This is a bottle opener. You can get a lot of these for free. So this is gonna go in one end. And then with the hacksaw, I cut off the top of the nail and came up with this. Now, a couple things I learned. Originally, I used the rounded file and just made a curve in the wand. But I was unable to break the glass. I'm really hitting it hard. You need a point hitting the rim here. When you say bring a bottle, you're hitting that. If you can direct all the energy to one point on that glass rim, it does break. Woo! It actually worked. Okay, so I need a sharp edge. Epoxy is a two-part clay. I used it on my arc glider wand and really like the results of that. So I'm gonna use the similar approach in making my champagne bottle opener wand. I took a bottle opener and I filed it down so that it would easily slide into the PEX pipe. Drilled a hole and then lined that up to keep it in place. Making modifications to the area that strikes the bottle will be much more difficult once the handle and everything is put in place than it is now where I can just pull the nail out. I really think this notch is going to help keep things in place. I'm also using tape as a spacer right now. This will be the handle for this part of the wand and then I'm gonna extend it up more in line with the actual wand, the length of the handle with the striking area here. Ground this down, you could file it, and I gave it a kind of a sharp edge because I noticed with the machete that that's exactly what it had. And I've tapered it down to look more like a wand. I'm gonna test this version of the nail, see how it does before I finish the rest of the design. I don't wanna make up the entire wand only to find out that it's not gonna work. Let's do this thing. Oh, thank you. <laughs> it works. Nice. All right, very successful test. You can kind of see where I struck it, right here at the lip, and then it just cracked around. So now I know it works. Couple things. It's a little crooked and it's a little loose. So I'm gonna tighten that up, sand that down, and then it's time to start sculpting clay. I took some electrical tape, cut it in half, and made a spacer wall. So I can either offset the screw, I might file further down, smooth that out a bit so it's more in the center, redrill this hole, and then my thoughts are I'm going to pour glue in. I've got a wooden spacer because there's a distance between here and the bottle opener, so I'm going to have to make an adjustment there. Instead of messing around with gluing, I think I'm just going to build it up with tape so that I can make a spacer that will fit really tight in there, and then I'm going to rely on the pins to do all the work of keeping everything together. With the spacers, I have to be slightly off center so that this comes in at the right place. And I measured exactly where this hole needed to be. You can see it pass through. And I put it in place right where I wanted it. And then I used the channel to help me put the hole on the other side. And now we've got a centered wand. You could probably get away with three quarter inch, but I just happen to have these one inch flat profile, which I like. Set this. Put the nut on the other end. Fit check on the spacer. This is a three quarter inch dowel. Do a little fit check here. Yeah, it's not rattling around anymore. Push it down in, and then I'm gonna use a screw driver, kind of ram it home. As I did with this bolt, I drilled a starter hole, then I put this in, lined it up, and then I drilled the second hole using, this is the guide. To fill in the gap here, cut out a piece of dowel. And all I'm gonna do is just slide it in, and that will be a spacer for the top. And then I'm gonna run the number eight screw through 
And that's going to keep it all real solid. You can see it's flat there. I'll file this down, smooth it out even more. This is rock solid, straight. That's not going anywhere. On this end, to fill this gap, I'm just jamming a bunch of toothpicks down in there, breaking them off so it doesn't move around and crack. Probably should jam that in with a flathead screwdriver instead of using your fingernail. You can see where I just kind of filled in the gap. I filed down the nuts and the screws. Now it's time for epoxy. We're going to start out with 20 grams of A and the B. And then you mix it together. I think I'm going to do 27 of each. The ball of B. It's kind of like a clay texture. 27. So you just kind of mix these together until they're uniform. And then you wait five minutes and then you start shaping. The wand has an upper piece and then a lower piece. I'm going to use this as a guide. I'm going to build this up a little bit more this time. First thing I'm going to do is just put a coat right here. Just put a layer down. I'm using a three quarter inch PVC pipe to roll it out to get a uniform thickness. It's very sticky. It's like you want to hit it with a flower. Just form it around. I want to make sure I cover up those nuts really well. Pull it off like this. It's very pliable and sticks to just about everything. The whole idea at this point is just to get a base layer on from which to work from. The nuts have pretty much disappeared, taking it all the way down to the bottom. Now I'm going to roll out some for this part here. This has a one to three hour working time. I found you can do pretty much all you need to do. It hardens as you go. I'm going to lay it on. I've marked a line here where I want this to go. Play with it and get it in place. At this point, I'm just continuing to rough out the top and the bottom of the wand so that I can texture it and carve it. Little bumps. I'm going to reserve two little rolls for the branches that come out in a couple places. This is the second time I've used this a epoxy. I'll post it down below if you're interested and getting some of your own. It's a little more expensive than the super sculpey that I typically use, but it is the best for making things that you don't need to bake or you can't bake. Just gotta get a sense of things here. And then we're into the texturing phase, which is always fun. I found that if you wait half hour or so, then it becomes less sticky and more manageable. Still just roughing things out, putting a couple lumps here and there to help me with, I'm gonna start carving. Progress being made, it takes a little bit of trying to make the clay look more like a piece of wood. These tools, I got at Harbor Freight for about $5. And then I've made a couple of them with just nails, cotter pin that I'm using to provide certain details and make it more and more like wood. Putting in some dark lines and deep lines and then putting in some finer lines and just kind of building it up over time, making it look as natural as possible. I'm at the 25 minute mark and it's really easier to play with, carve into, it's getting its finalized shape. These knobby ends are really heavily textured, so make it look as wandish as possible. Feeling pretty good about this. I'm putting in some real fine lines. I've got the two main nubs of sub nub here and a sub nub here that I've noticed and quite a few of the graphics and then this is all kind of crazy up in here this is my tenth wand a little bit better every time you make one it takes a little bit of detail and I am NOT an artist I'm good at looking at something and trying to copy what it is fair it out pretty happy with that maybe seeing that down a little bit smooth it out the texture on here on the handle is really coming out just a whole bunch of different layered lines then we're gonna hit this with a brown rattle can spray paint and then i'll go in and put in the details after and this will be an indestructible wand because it has a 12 inch nail center that runs pretty much the whole way through so i'm gonna let it dry overnight and then we'll start the painting it's the next day this is all hardened up i'm pretty happy with how it turned out so i'll tape this up and take it outside and spray paint it <laughs> really brings out the detail. For the prime coat, about 36 hours have passed. It's all dry and I use this Krylon Gloss Leather Brown. I took the tape off. I still have the tape in the wire so I can hang it up and let this dry. Now just to give it more detail. I'm going to start out with a acrylic black paint and then touch it up with a little bit of coffee latte. Number 10 brush and with all the dings and the scrapes just kind of fits in here and that's what the details I did on the epoxy. Really doesn't take much paint at all. Better to add more later than to put too much out there. I'm going to leave that brown for now and lay down the black. There'll be a little bit of brown showing through. Now all these nooks and crannies, you're not likely to get all those. Here I want to be a little careful. I mean, right up to the edge here. You can see it really doesn't take much paint at all to have an impact. And I'm fine with specifically here and here of not completely painting into everything. 
layers of color. You can also dry brush this a little bit, just tap it off like that. As far as the bottle opener here on this side, I think I'm gonna leave that silver for now. I might touch it up with a little bit of black marker and then hit this with clear coat to protect it. As you can see, very little paint required. Advantages of having a good base paint. But just that one layer of paint really makes a difference in the wand. Brings out depth, and texture, character. I'm gonna let that dry a little bit and clean the brush and then hit it with a little bit of this coffee latte and see how it looks. It doesn't take long for the paint to dry and it's kind of got a dull finish because of the acrylic. I'm gonna use a number four little thicker bristle brush to hit the highlights. I'm just gonna put a little dab there because again, it doesn't take much at all. And I'm gonna tap off a good bit of this. Ooh, too much there. Yeah, way too much on the brush. There we go. Really kind of hitting it ever so subtly. Again, too much there. Might be able to wipe that off. And I'm holding the brush at an angle here, trying to get the wear marks. All right, so that's the first pass. I need to probably go back through and hit it again with the black, and then just alternate back and forth, trying to get the weathering in this wand's gonna have. Alternating back and forth, building up layer upon layer, dry brushing at this point between the black and the coffee latte, making it more natural trying to get a genuine wood texture. And having two brushes like this helps because you can just bounce back and forth. That's kind of a rough edge going in and out of a pocket. So you can imagine that that would be a little more worn. That's just about where I want it. Eh, a little bit of detail here. You can play with it a little too much if you're not careful. You gotta be satisfied at some point. Perfection is the arch enemy of just enough. Those three colors as opposed to just doing two. Nothing wrong with this. I'm pretty happy with how this turned out, but this is a whole nother level. After getting the handle where I wanted it, I noticed this was just a little too shiny. I have to wear down on this. So I'm gonna go back to the Cafe Latte, dry brush just ever so slightly, some rub lines and details into this part, just to knock it down a little bit. Wipe it down, nothing heavy. Wipe most of it off with a paper towel. Just the faintest of detail, make it look like it's been around the block. This isn't right out of the box. This is one of the final movies. Much better. Trying to make the groove highlight a little bit. Dark line, again, little details. I'm gonna take this tape off. I'm just gonna color it in. Guess you could use brown if you wanted to. Or you could just leave it silver, totally up to you. If you don't like it, you probably can just rub it right off. As a final step, because I know I'm gonna have this around liquids like beer, soda, champagne, I just sprayed it with a clear mat. Nothing shiny, it's not real glossy. Here's one where I actually use the gloss. So you can see the difference in the shine. This is really kind of shiny. And this one's just got kind of a subtle gloss to it. This is an indestructible wand. Not only does it have a giant steel nail in it, but I really like this handle. It's very comfortable. And this probably will outlast me. Woo! Thumbs up and comments always appreciated. Thanks for watching. And stay tuned for more crazy builds like this coming soon.